Hey, it's Mike from Tech TV, and today we're going to talk about CO2 versus high pressure air. Okay, the everybody that when they first get into paintball, myself included, we all started out with CO2 tanks. Okay, and what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to convince you if you are using a CO2 tank to switch over to high pressure air, you know, like one of these tanks, okay? Um, first thing I'm gonna talk about, to understand CO2 and, and why it, it, it did, it served its function as the, the, the gas of choice for paintball. Why it doesn't work that well anymore. First off, you have to understand how CO2 works, okay? CO2 for the most part, when they fill your CO2 tank up, generally about the bottom inch of it is liquid, okay? CO2 at about, let's say about 85 degrees, if the tank's at about 85 degrees, will usually have an output pressure of about 850 PSI, okay? So at about 85 degrees, there's an output pressure of about 850 PSI. As the temperature of the tank increases, the pressure increases, okay? And that's why you see CO2 tanks, if you leave this out into the sun, sometimes you'll see the, uh, sometimes they'll blow macro lines, sometimes they'll blow burst discs. This is why when you leave a full CO2 tank out in the sun, um, the pressure goes up, okay? So at, at, 85, at 85 degrees, we're at, let's say, 850 PSI. If you go up to 110 degrees, you could be up to 11, 1200 PSI. Go down to 50 degrees, and you could be down anywhere between four to 500 PSI. So, and, and CO2 tanks, another issue with CO2 tanks is that the faster you shoot, basic physics, you've got pressurized gas here, um, you know, outputting, and as you're shooting, these tanks chill. So as you start shooting, um, CO2, have, the tanks have a tendency to chill. Now, as we talked about, as they chill, the pressure drops. As your pressure drops going into your gun, your velocity is going to drop. Um, that's, one, that's one of the biggest things about CO2 is that as you start shooting your gun, ta -ta 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 -ta, you can feel your tank chilling, and then as your tank chills, your pressure drops, and then as your pressure drops, so does your velocity, okay? Something else too about CO2 that, uh, that's kind of, kind of a, a money waster is that with CO2, because you get that burst of uh, freezing cold air, uh, as you unscrew your tank, you go through a lot of O-rings, okay? So although this tank may cost you $25 when you first start, and let's say the high pressure tank costs you 50, just about every single time you screw your tank in and out, you're gonna end up ripping a dollar O-ring. So uh, you figure over the course of maybe two, three months of playing, you may be out already 10 or $15 in O-rings. So um, that's something else. Um, something else too is that it can cause your gun to be horribly inconsistent, horribly inconsistent. Um, like what I talked to you about at the beginning, CO2 generally the last about inch of your tank is liquid. So let's say for instance, as you're walking out to the field, you know, you've got your, uh, your tank screwed into your gun and you tilt your gun down like this, now what's gonna happen is, is that liquid is gonna ooze into the gun, and then when you start shooting, that liquid's gonna all of a sudden rapidly expand as it turns to gas, and so it may actually bypass your, say for instance you have a regulator on your gun, it may actually bypass your regulator, so your regulator may be trying to regulate at 300, you may get a, uh, a couple drops of liquid CO2 in here that's gonna rapidly expand, that's gonna go to 850 PSI, and could possibly ruin the internals of your gun. So. You know, CO2 on certain guns, on some of the, the, the more um, super entry level guns like Titmans and Spiders, they serve their function. But ideally, in the future, you want to upgrade to high pressure air. Okay, now this is just a beat up high pressure air tank, okay? Um, I'm going to tell you the differences, but one of the biggest, one of the main reasons I'm going to try to sell you on converting over to high pressure air, even if it's a cheap system, okay? CO2, you have no idea. Um, if this tank is filled or not. Now I know you know the fields try to do a good job. They've got scales and they you know they uh, fill up there, then they degas it to try to get it nice and cold to get a good fill. You never know with CO2. You're 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 literally um, you know when you're out there, you're really taking a chance. Sometimes you're going to run out of air. Sometimes you, you have no idea really truly if your if your tank is filled with a high pressure air system. This is how it works with this tank. Okay, and this is a beat up old piece of shit tank. This tank has 3,000 PSI here, and this regulator meters it down to a perfect 850 PSI output pressure, okay? So regardless of what the tank pressure is at, anywhere from 1,000 PSI to 3,000 PSI, this regulator is gonna meter the pressure going into your gun at a perfect 850 PSI every single time. Something else too, with high pressure air, you never have to worry about running out of air on the field because you always have a gauge here 
and you know how much pressure is in your tank. Okay, if you run out of air on the tank, that's your fault. It's not the person filling your CO2 tank. Um, also, something else is if for you guys, and I'm lucky I'm in Florida where it's hot as shit all the time. Okay, a lot of people live up north and this and the other. CO2, like we talked about at the very beginning, once you get below about 50 degrees and the tank starts to chill, your pressure starts to drop. So it's going to fill up with more and more liquid. So you folks that are playing up north, you guys that are using CO2, um, especially like 50, 40 degree weather, you may only get 15, 20 shots before your pressure on your tank is going to drop so low that it's not going to cycle your gun. And then if it, especially if you have like a spider or a tipman, you know, it's going to start cycling really fast because it doesn't go all the way back to catch the sear and then you've emptied your tank. So you just wasted five dollars on the tank, a dollar on an O-ring to go out and play in 40 degree weather. So I highly recommend, highly recommend, if at all possible, and if it's in your budget, to go to high pressure air. Now let's say for instance, people that are on a budget, everybody's on a budget, um, the you can still get a tank like this one, which is just a basic uh, you know 48 cubic inch. 3,000 PSI tank. I believe you can pick these up for like $50, okay? $25 for a CO2 tank plus O-rings plus running out of air on the field plus you can't use it in cold weather versus a tank that you can use in any weather, okay? You can use this tank in minus 10 degree weather um, and, and, and it'll work just fine, okay? It's 3,000 PSI here. Perfect metered uh, air burst every single time of 850 PSI. Now, there's one other thing that I have noticed with CO2 is that CO2 when you're shooting really fast, as the bottle chills and as your gun starts filling up with liquid, everything starts getting uh, moisture and condensation. Something else too is that, you know, we all know that ice, you know, if anybody that's ever been in a hailstorm, ice hurts, okay? CO2 tanks, if that liquid gets through the gun, the bolt will actually shoot ice into the back of the ball, causing the ball to rip apart, okay? So all that ice and frost and all that stuff gets up into the bolt and when the bolt goes and hits the ball to shoot it out of the gun, that air pressure spine is going to be a mix between ice and water and also it's going to be high pressure air. So it's like getting, it's like sandblasting your balls with ice, which would really hurt. <laughs> anyway, um, but that's what, uh, that's what it feels like, you know, that, that's what the paintballs feel like when they get hit with all that ice. So CO2 does have a tendency to break a lot more paint than high pressure air. High pressure air is generally cleaner. Um, generally it's filtered before it gets into CO2 is a little bit of a dirtier gas um, but you know that kind of sums up the differences between high pressure air and CO2 I mean I, I don't think I've used CO2 except for maybe all my pump guns in years um, it works great on pump guns but with spiders and tipmans and other guns as you start shooting on the trigger about 100 150 balls that you shoot this is going to start getting ice cold your pressure is going to drop your consistency is going to be all over the place it's going to ruin your internals because it freezes o-rings if at all possible if at all possible, I recommend upgrading to high pressure air as quickly as possible. You're going to have a much more fun paintball experience and you're never going to have to worry about running out of air. So email me if you have any questions. Thanks for tuning in.